There we go. The Krebs cycle. Also called the citric acid cycle. I think the fellow's name that sort of isolated most of this pathway was named was Hans Krebs, and so that's why it's called the Krebs cycle. Uh, citric acid, singular cycle. Both of those are sort of synonymous. Okay. So, before we talk about the citric acid cycle, we have to introduce ourselves to yet another player in the game. We've introduced ourselves to AD, ADP and ATP. We've inter introduced ourselves to NAD, right? And now there's a new player, and his name is FAD. FAD. And he stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide. So we'll write that once just for fun, but we'll call him FAD for now. Flavin adenine dinucleotide. So you can imagine he, he's very similar to NAD, which was nicotinamide adenine nucleotide, I believe. Remember that? So their structures are similar. They're dinucleotides, and they're fairly large. I can show you a picture of him, because I have... Um, well, before I show you a picture of him, I'll show you that he has two forms. He can actually he has three forms. <laughs> he can be FAD, and when he is, he's usually got a plus written beside him. Okay, because he's in his uh, um, oxidized form. But he can also become FADH or FAD FADH two. He has several different situations. Um, we're going to basically discuss the, fir the first one. And what happens is essentially he can lose one hydrogen or two hydrogens. Okay? And dinucleotide, right there. So he has three different sort of states that he can exist in, rather than two states. So you can, you can sort of knock off some of his electrons and make the FADH2 turn into FEDH, or you can knock off more electrons and make them turn into FAD plus all the way. So he has three sort of situations. For now, we're going to look at basically, uh, we're going to see him doing this. He's going to lose electrons and turn from uh, FADH2 into FADH. Uh, but, but be aware that it's kind of a double step process when that happens. It's just we're just going to look at the overall rather than worry about the intermediate electron change, okay? So that's him. Um, let's look at his picture. I got him on... Oh, just a second. I got to recalibrate. All right, here we go. So uh, let's see. I think this is the one that has his picture. This is pretty much him. Uh, okay. Okay. Now I've got to do a problem with the ink. So one second. I've got to go back here. I've got to change to my pointer. And then go back. Okay. Right? So there he is. Uh, this whole thing here on sort of the left and top of the picture. You can see how he's a dinucleotide. Uh, it's drawn a little bit differently. It's kind of drawn sort of, instead of drawing it um, so that you know, the last one, we had the nucleotide here and then another one underneath it. They've kind of stretched it out. They've, they've bent that bottom out. See how those phosphates are really close together there? They wouldn't do that in reality. They'd push away, right, from Vesper. But I think they did that just to make the picture so they could put this other part here. Because down below here is the active part of the molecule. So I'm going to go back and get my ink. There may be a red. Okay. Uh, this bottom section is where the action is happening. Just like on NAD, it was just that little top piece where that changed. And what you'll notice here is we have two H pluses and two electrons that can possibly be transferred. And if you look closely, you'll see that the N here and over here have changed. The H is missing, right? And then if you look right here, you'll see that this has changed. So those are the two H's that either get attached or removed. 
And uh, of course, in order to do that, you also have to attach or remove electrons, which form the bonds. And so we have this sort of oxidized form with, without the H's and the reduced form with the H's. You'll also notice that the double bond structure changes. Um, if you look in this region in between here, you can see how the double bonds inside the uh, rings change. And there's actually a fundamental thing here for those of you really interested in chemistry. Um, in, the redu in the oxidized form, it's actually what we call a resonance structure, whereas in the other form, it's not. And that changes the behavior of the molecule. But don't worry about that because that's something you, unless you're really into chemistry. Do you know anything about resonance in ring structure and aromatic hydrocarbons? Did you learn that yet? You did hydrocarbons, but you didn't, do, you didn't do what aromatic means, sort of. I might have mentioned it a few times, yeah. But again, it just changes the property. So we're just interested in seeing that this works kind of like NAD, doesn't it? It's almost the same thing, except that it, it, can, it can acquire one or two hydrogens instead of just one. So that's all we really need to know about FAD. But we're going to use him today. And he also then has a role to play later. So that's him. Okay, now let's go on to... Calvin cycle, or sorry, the um, citric acid cycle. And, uh, oops, no, that's not the right eraser. There we go. Okay. I may as well erase this stuff up here too while I'm at it. So we'll get a black, we're going we're gonna to draw some more formulas. So what we had already, the stage before, right, uh, just to kind of, actually that's the wrong pictures. I like these pictures better. They have better uh, information. What we had before, just to summarize, from pyruvate oxidation was the pyruvate molecule, uh, three carbons, double bond oxygen there, double bond oxygen there, and I think a CH3 at the bottom, pyruvate. And the pyruvate was turned into something called acetyl-CoA, which had this little weakly bound um, coenzyme on it, attached by a sulfur. And then it had just a single CO and then the CH3. Acetyl CoA. So that was the end result. And we won't worry about all the, there was some carbon dioxide produced, right? And the, and the, the CoA enzyme was added in, and there was an NAD thing going on, and all of that, but we're just remembering. So now this molecule is where we're going to start. This molecule is going to enter into a cycle of molecules, where, well, the citric acid cycle, and so we're going to draw this sort of around and around and around. Now it's difficult on the smart board because it, I would like to draw it all in one big circle. So I'm going to try, but I can't guarantee that we're going to run out of room. It's going to be, have to be a little bit small. So that acetyl-CoA, or acetyl, sorry, I keep saying that, acetyl. That acetyl-CoA is going to enter the cycle. I should use black, though, because we're going to use colors for other things. So let's go with black. It's going to enter the cycle like this. And the first thing that's going to happen is that coenzyme that was attached to it is going to be now removed. So the coenzyme A is going to come out, come off of that. Okay? And now this is going to be difficult because what happens is it's a cycle. So there's a molecule on the left that's also going to be coming into the picture. So I'm going to draw an arrow here. The molecule on the left that's going to be coming in, uh, he's the end of the cycle. So I'm going to just start on one side and kind of go around, right? So this acetyl-CoA is going to be added to another molecule that's coming in on its way. And when it does, it produces something called citrate. So let's see if we can squeeze citrate in here. So COO, CH2. C, COO, OH, 
and another CH2, and a COO on the bottom. Lots of carboxyl groups on this citrate. Uh, no, I can't zoom it in, but I can... Yeah, so what you can do is look on page 176 in your textbook, and you'll be able to see all these molecules if this is too hard for you to see. When you're watching this on a computer screen, you'll be able to see it. But if I do it any bigger, we won't get it all in. So we'll write his name, citrate. Okay, so find him in the, in the textbook, and you can copy him out there. He's uh, on page 176, citrate. And then citrate is going to be turned into something else. So we'll draw a sort of an arrow that goes around like this. And I'm going to put another molecule here. He's turned into something called isocitrate, which is basically an isomer of citrate. You can see him in your book um, in the next section. Your textbook is, is hard to understand because they have these red letters which show the enzymes, but not the, the molecule is written in black in the box, right? So you have to look for that. Um, the interesting thing about citrate to notice is that it's a carbon, it's a six carbon sugar, right? Has six carbons in it. Um, the acetyl-CoA did not have six carbons, but it, it does when it combines with the molecule that's coming in at the end of the cycle. Okay, I'm going to try and draw the isocitrate right here, make sure I have everything right. So the isocitrate is uh, a COO and uh, a CH2, so it's the same up there. C, C, COO, a little H on this side, and the CH2 here, and then down here, the COO again. A little minus. And uh, let's see. Oh, my mistake. Sorry. Let me just fix. This isn't a CH2. It's just a C. That's where the OH is placed, right? So what happens here is the you have the an H on one side and the OH. So if you'll notice, that's the only difference is the OH group has sort of bumped down to the carbon near the bottom. It's been rearranged. And that's called isocitrate. So it's an isomerization. So not much happens along that in terms of adding or subtracting because we're just rearranging the molecule. Okay, then we'll come down here and we'll slide down. And here I'm going to have to make a little more space. Now we get this weird molecule called alpha-ketoglutarate. So let's put him in there. Uh, alpha-ketoglutarate. So we have a C, O, O. Yeah, we are. We're going to come all the way around to the back. CH2, CH2. C double bond O, and a little COO on the bottom. I think that's it, alpha ketoglutarate. So I'm going to go down just a tad more and write his name. Alpha dash ketoglutarate. You see the ketone in there? The double bond O? You can see where the word keto is, comes from. This has got that double bond O on the bot near the bottom there. Alpha, alpha keto glutarate. But in order for this to happen, there's some there's some interesting stuff that has to occur. In order for this to happen, uh, two things occur actually. One is that an NAD molecule must enter this. NAD plus will enter this uh, situation and pick up H to become NADH. So there's an, an H that's being removed, plus an H plus, 
which is released to the cytoplasm. That says plus H plus. Yeah, I should use a smaller, I'll use a better font next time. The other thing that happens, of course, is we have to get rid of some carbon and oxygen because this alpha ketoglutarate has less carbon and oxygen. Uh, and so let's go, mm, let's go purple for that one, nice and thin. So what also happens is that CO2 is also released at this stage. Carbon dioxide is released out of this reaction. So we have the NADH being made. And remember, what this means is that NAD is reduced. It's given electrons, which means it now has a slightly higher energy state than it did before. So this NAD has gained some energy from this changeover. And that NAD is holding on to that energy temporarily because we're going to use it later to power the rest of this process. Okay, so now alpha ketoglutarate is going to turn into another molecule. Let's go around like this, get towards the bottom. And this is called succinyl-CoA. So we're going to have Uh, little O, double bond with a C, and then a CH2, and then another CH2, and then a COO minus. And right up here on this C, the enzyme CoA, the, the uh, coenzyme, is reattached. Okay? Okay, we're back. So let's call this guy uh, succinyl CoA. Make sure I still have the right size. Succinyl CoA. Um, and you'll notice what's happened here. He's also lost a few things. So we have to make some additions to this arrow because more stuff is going on here. And so, obviously the CoA has shown up. Uh, what color did we use for CoA at the top? Blue. So the CoA has to sort of enter into this process. Maybe I'll just slide it in like this over here. CoA. In. That's one of the things that happens. You'll notice there are fewer carbons. If you look up here and you count them, one, two, three, four, five. So we started with a six carbon sugar, right? And look what happens. A carbon dioxide leaves and takes a carbon with it. And so that means a five carbon. And now I'm down to four carbons. So guess what? Another carbon dioxide must have been released from this CO2. And we also have another NAD going on. At the same time, we have our NAD plus, that's a D, not a P, which swoops in and does its thing and turns into NADH and plus uh, on H plus. So if you count up all the H's, right, and all the, the things that are happening here, Whoops, you'll see uh, changes here. Okay, one of the carbons that was removed. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. Okay, good. So more action. Now we're going to start swinging back up. So another arrow, which goes this way, boom, over to here. Uh, and... We have a new molecule, succinate. So we'll draw him as a C, O, O, attached to a CH2, attached to a CH2, attached to COO. I think that's everything. We've gotten rid of the coenzyme A. So the 
coenzyme A is now coming off. Goodbye, coenzyme A. Another interesting thing happens here. Essentially, it causes an ADP to turn into an ATP. So the energy from this reaction or from this change can be stored by attaching a phosphate to an ADP. So this is the first time, I think, no, we, we saw that in uh, glycolysis too. So, um, but there's an interesting thing though. It's not quite as perfect as we would like it to be. There's an intermediary thing. There's a, you know how ATP is adenosine triphosphate? Well, guess what? There's also guanine triphosphate. Guanine is another one of the bases. So it's called GTP. So what actually happens here, uh, let's see, let's go red, is we have this little GDP, which is the guanine diphosphate, comes in, swoops in, and becomes a GTP. But then he swoops around like this, and he hands that phosphate that he's just picked up to an ADP, which swoops around like that and becomes ATP. So in other words, we can't directly transfer the phosphate to the ATP molecule. Because of the energy levels involved, we need an intermediary molecule to help us out. So guanine diphosphate is just the right molecule to pick up that phosphate first, and then he can transfer it through ATP. And so he just kind of cycles. He picks up the phosphate, right? Um, wait a minute, did I draw that backwards? Hold on. Oh, that's right, yeah. So we also have to put right here plus an inorganic phosphate because it has to come from somewhere floating in the uh, cytosol. Or actually, we're in, the we're in the mitochondria now, so this would be the mitochondrial sort of matrix. Um, so he picks up that phosphate and becomes GTP, but then that phosphate gets handed over to an ADP. So the end result is the production of an ATP at this step through this intermediary. Okay. And we didn't write succinate here uh, as a name, so let's write the name of this new molecule. Succinate. And we're still at four carbons. Three more molecules to go, and we'll be done. Let's see if we can squeeze them all in. I'm hoping I can. So one more. Swing up. Um, and we get to the next molecule, go up a little bit. And this molecule is fumarate. So it's going to be a COO, uh, a C with an H, and then there's a double bond to a C with an H, and then a COO. It's kind of like a little symmetrical molecule. It's called fumarate or fumarate. Fumarate, I think, is how it's supposed to be pronounced. Fumarate. Now, in order for this to happen, uh, in order to get a double bond like that, if you notice, down below there were, there were two H2s in the middle of the molecule in the succinate. And now there's only one H each. So we had to get rid of two H's somehow, right? And this is where our new friend comes in. Our new friend, uh, which I don't have a color for, so we'll go with, uh, well, we'll use um, green because he's kind of like the NAD. It's the same idea. Our new friend was FAD. Oh, let me get smaller. FAD plus swings in and swings out and walks away with both of those H's, FAD H2. Now, for some reason, uh, maybe I'm, I better, uh, the FAD isn't often written with a plus. And I think, that, I think that's because, um, because remember I told you about that resonance change? So it, 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 I put the plus there to show that it's the reduced form, but it's not actually ionized. Because in NAD, we saw the little N had a plus. It had an actual positive charge. Whereas here, it's a rearrangement of the bonds rather than a charge. So FAD probably shouldn't have a little plus sign. Maybe we should go back to the very start of our lesson where I was writing about it, and maybe we shouldn't uh, 
put that little plus on there. That's a mistake I, I just realized as I'm writing it. It's not supposed to have the plus. It doesn't, doesn't have any atom that carries a particular charge in the molecule. It's just the reassigning of that, that weird resonance bond. Okay, so we've got fumarate and we've got our FAD. Good. Now we have uh, one more, well, two more molecules. So there's going to be another arrow. Now I have to squeeze two in here. So let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slide over to the side a little bit. And I'm going to draw the next molecule. And this one is uh, malate. C O O. C C C H two and C O O minus, and on the other side there's an O H on this side. And that's pretty much him. I write his name up here because I don't have any space underneath. Malate. And uh, in this exchange, in order to go from fumarate to malate, we have to uh, add a little water molecule. So we'll put blue, I guess. So what happens here is there's an input into this step of an H2O, a water molecule. And then one more step. Oh, boy. So the last molecule in the stage is the one that joins up with the citrate again, and that's called, uh, called oxaloacetate. So we have a COO minus. We have a C and a double bond O, a CH2, and a COO minus. And an OH. Nope, it can't be there. That's my mistake. That's too many bonds. Uh, no, there's no OH on this guy. I think that's it. We'll put a little, little tick right there, because there's a bond. And that's called oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate. And then we can put our arrow to finish off the cycle. And there is another interesting thing that happens here. Our little friend NAD has to come along again. NAD, which does have the plus sign, NAD, swoops in, swoops out, becomes NADH, and then a proton is released in the process into the surrounding matrix. Okay. So there's what's going on. And there's the citric acid cycle. The formulas are, are nice to see because you can track how the molecule is changing and which atoms are being removed, in particular the H's and the C's and O's as carbon dioxide, at each step. There are enzymes at every step of the way, but we're not writing them in because obviously it would really complicate the picture. Uh, but, and we're not going to worry about each one of those, but those enzymes do exist and everyone has a name and it does its job, right? And so what we want to do now is just go back and draw sort of a circle with just the names and focus on what's going in and out. Question. Okay, so good point. We, for, we, we forgot to finish. Once you get to oxaloacetate, we've drawn the arrow to citrate, but we haven't talked about what changes happen there. And in order for that to happen, we had the CoA taking off, but there's also a water. You're right. So we need to put a, an H2O entering the process at this particular spot as well, and that finishes it off. Okay. So that's sort of the cycle, and uh, you can see all the different changes that are being made. And you can also see this is where all the carbon dioxide comes from. We know that carbon dioxide is a product of the combustion of glucose, right? This is where the carbon dioxide comes from uh, as this cycle goes from a basically a a three carbon sugar, a two carbon uh, acetyl CoA added to this four carbon oxaloacetate producing a six carbon citrate. And then as we go around, those carbons are released, right? But they come back in again. So the, the carbons have to be continuously gotten rid of because essentially acetyl CoA is, is adding two carbons into the process, into the circle every time. So every time you go around the circle, we eliminate carbons. We eliminate carbons. And there are, uh, there's a purple one there. There's a purple one there. 
right? I think that's the only two. There are two carbons. So what we're adding here, if you look at what we're adding to the cycle, it has two carbons, but we're also releasing those two carbons in the cycle, and that's what gets us back to where we started again. And the oxygens as well, right? The oxygens uh, as well. Uh, we have one oxygen here, right? That's going to be that could be released, and if we have H two O, H two O is also a way to add oxygen into the process. So everything balances out. Question? Yeah. So that's a good question. Remember that when we started the acetyl CoA, we ended up with two of them from the glucose molecule. So everything that happens in this Krebs cycle is actually times two for one glucose molecule. Very good point, right? Because two acetyl-CoA's were produced from one glucose molecule. Everything times two. Okay, so now we're going to do the simplified picture. The simplified diagram that focuses on not so much the formulas, but what's going on at each step. Okay, we've moved down and we're going to do a, a smaller picture and we're just going to write the words of all of these things. So we have the acetyl-CoA. Oh, I better do this small, a little bit smaller. The acetyl-CoA, which was the product of the pyruvate oxidation and the pyruvate was the product of the glycolysis process, right? So we have... Um, Acetyl-CoA which enters into the cycle, and of course there's an arrow like this too because we also have the other end of the cycle. And so it goes into the cycle, and the first one is citrate. And then after citrate, we go down like this, and we have isocitrate. And then isocitrate, we go down a little bit further, turns into alpha ketoglutarate. Glutarate. Okay, it's in your book, remember? If you get behind, it's all the same thing. We're not this is not new. This is just what we just did. It's just the names. So if you forget which if you get behind, just go look at the last the last notes and you'll see it. If we go around like this, I'm gonna to try to get this all in one section here. Uh, this is the succinyl CoA. And then that turns into succinate. Um, yeah. And then the succinate turns into fumarate. And then the fumarate turns into malate. Oh, I'm almost there. My picture's a little bit. Darn it. Okay, you know what I can do? I can just erase this arrow a bit and make some more space there. Because we have to get... Oh, rats. We have to get oxaloacetate in there. And the fumarate, and we have to get a malate in here. No, not a... Uh, yeah, Mali. That's right. So we'll go up here, and we'll go there like that. So we got to get all those guys in. So there's just the words, which makes it a little bit easier to see the cycle, right? And now what we're going to do is just going to go back and use our colors. So let's first do where the NAD things happen. The NAD things are happening in a couple of different places. Between isocitrate and alpha-ketoglutarate. There's NAD, which comes along, picks up electrons, and the H, and there's always a plus H plus that goes with him, like that. Um, the other NAD happens at the next step from alpha-ketoglutarate, so we'll put them in here. We'll put, uh, I've got to get a couple of things in here, so let me put the NAD here. Swooping in and coming out. NADH, NH plus. Good. 
And there's one more NAD way over at the end. So I have to switch to way over where the malate turns into the oxaloacetate. So right here, I have to have an NAD plus swooping in and turning into the NADH plus H plus. So there are three NADHs that are made in this process, three of them. But because everything is times two, because we got uh, two acetyl coas from every glucose, one glucose molecule will produce at this stage another, uh, actually six of these NADHs, right? Yeah. No, no, we already, uh, no, not no enzymes for this. Okay, so those are the NADs. The other one that's kind of important for us is the FAD. So where does he happen? He happens over between the succinate and the fumarate. So I'll write him in here as well. He's the FAD, which slides in and becomes FADH2. And so these are the, in green, these are the ones, these are the guys, or girls, however you want to look at them. These are the molecules that are going to be moved forward into the next step. Because obviously this is a cycle. It doesn't, it, it, the black things don't go anywhere. They just keep cycling. And, and it's the production of these NADHs and FADHs that we're going to utilize in the next stage, all these things that are being made. So those green things are, you know, very important because those are going on to the next stage. Now, there's also some other stuff that has to happen in order to get the, whoops, in order to get the, um, the, the molecules to change. So we need to have some other things. So let's go back to the very top here. And first of all, let's get rid of the CoA. So the CoA has to come out of this. CoA. And there's another place where CoA does its thing down here at the bottom, right here, the, the CoA has been added. So obviously the CoA has to go in. So we'll put a CoA here and we'll put it going into this particular reaction. But then again, if you follow the arrows, succinate has no CoA. And so that means the CoA must come out in that step. You can, that says CoA, not CaA. You can kind of figure it out, right? It's not so much that you have to memorize it as much as just use logical deduction to figure out which, where these things go in and out once, once you know the names of everything. Okay. Now we've got the other thing. Let's do the carbon dioxide because it's, it's kind of important. The first carbon dioxide is right here uh, and it happens. And you can, if you, if you look at the pictures, uh, the, the structural formulas, you can see the carbon dioxides have to come out when you get the carbons going down. So, for instance, way up here, right, we went from a six, sorry, a five carbon molecule uh, in isocitrate down to a four carbon. Oh, no, that's a five too. What happened there? Oh, there's a, this is actually a six carbon because there's one hiding right there, right? So we've got that lots of, then we go down to five, and then here we go down to four in the molecule. So you can, you can figure that out too, if you know the structural formulas. So from isocitrate uh, to alpha ketoglutarate, we also are going to have a CO2. Uh, oh, I already got that CO2. Sorry, I got that CO2. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. That's why. Here we go. CO2 is going to be, oh, wrong color. Oh boy. Blue. Small line, CO2 is going to come out here. And it's also going to come out after the alpha ketoglutarate to the succinyl CoA. So we'll just throw it out here. CO2, out you come. So now we've got the CO2 taken care of. A couple more things. The water, let's do the waters. So we'll go back up to the top. There's a water. I'll do the water in blue as well. There's a water that has to slide in right here to make that part of the reaction happen. And there's only one other one, I think, and it's between fumarase and, or fumarate and uh, succinate, actually above it, the malate. 
So right here, there has to be a water that goes into this stage as well to get fumarate turning into malate. Those are the only waters. And then the last thing is that one little ATP between the succinyl CoA and the succinate, and it's that weird one. I'll just go down a bit. It's the weird, weird thing where the oh, where the GDP, the guanine triphosphate, serves as a sort of a helper. GDP. Nope. Let me do that again. G. TP, where am I? Yeah, so G, DP, plus the phosphate, becomes GTP. But then it gives it off to ADP, which becomes an ATP. All right, so this picture is basically what you want to study from. So you can identify what's going on at each stage and what's coming on and what's coming off. I don't think we've missed anything. Can anybody spot anything we've missed? Okay, so we'll stop this. This will be the end of the Krebs cycle video. And then we're going to do a second video where we're going to summarize the products that we get from the entire process thus far. Okay?